everyone, Charlie here from the Atomic Age, and today we're going to talk about Top Gun Maverick. Now, what do I, a nuclear engineer, have to say about Top Gun Maverick? Let's find out. The target is an unsanctioned uranium enrichment plant built in violation of a multilateral NATO treaty. The uranium produced there represents a direct threat to our allies in the region. Okay, so the target for their mission is an unauthorized uranium enrichment plant. Okay, so why does this adversarial nation, which it's probably kind of easy to guess who it is, why do they want to enrich uranium? So uranium can be used in a nuclear bomb. Uh, it can also be used in a power plant, but we don't really care about unauthorized enrichment for power plants. It's for nuclear bombs. You may have heard this also referred to as proliferation. So this is a proliferation concern, is the enrichment of uranium. Uh, to enrich uranium, nowadays you use what are called gaseous centrifuges. Centrifuges were very revolutionary in uranium enrichment in that you can enrich the same amount of uranium for about 5% of the energy needed for these other methods. So uh, this has made it a lot easier for countries to enrich uranium. It's still very hard. Uranium centrifuges are very uh, complicated to build. They spin at very high speeds. They can easily break and shatter. But it is, uh, it is still simpler to and easier to make to enrich uranium with centrifuges or at least it is easier to hide you don't need anywhere as big of facilities as you did with the old enrichment methods and uh you don't need as much energy so it's a lot easier to hide these things so yeah putting it underground in some kind of harsh terrain is much more feasible than with these old enrichment methods so uranium is a naturally occurring radioactive material that can be found on Earth. Uh, it has two principal components. There's uranium-235, which is the fissile isotope of uranium. Fissile means that it can sustain a chain reaction, aka can be used in a power plant or in a nuclear bomb. And it also has another part, uranium-238, which is not fissile, cannot support a chain reaction. In nature, uranium only has less than 1% of the fissile isotope uranium-235. The rest is uranium-238. There's a few other uranium isotopes, but 235 and 238 are the important ones, the big ones. In order to have a bomb, you need a higher concentration of uranium-235 than just 1%. You cannot have a bomb with an enrichment that low, and in fact, you can actually run very few reactors on an enrichment that low. So that is why reactors and bombs both need uranium enrichment, if they're using uranium, that is. We'll get into that a little later. Most reactors, if not all at the moment, uh, they use about 5% enriched. And then for your nuclear bombs, it's uh, on the order of 90% enriched in that neighborhood. Now, the effort required to get from uh, natural to 5% to 90% is not linear. So what this means is if you want to enrich weapons grade material to 90% uranium-235, 75% of the energy required to get to that level of enrichment is used just to get from natural uranium to 5% enriched. So uh, most of the effort is just doing uh, what seems like a very little amount of work. The leap required to go from 5% to weapons grade material is not that significant comparatively speaking you just have to run it for a little bit longer there's no real other hurdle than that so if uh any malicious country says they just want to use centrifuges for reactor enrichment uh, you should be uh skeptical of those claims because you don't need to do much more to get weapons grade uranium from that enrichment activity all right, so now we can take a look at their uh, little like 3D blueprint cutaway of the of the uranium enrichment facility here. Uh, these tanks are way too big. Centrifuges are much narrower than this. These would be more like some kind of storage tank, but maybe a storage tank for the unenriched product because the enriched product, if it was stored in these tanks, would go critical. And that means it's uh, developing a chain reaction. These tanks are way too wide for that. So a chain reaction is when a fissile atom splits, so like uranium-235. So if you have a bunch of fissile atoms together and one decides to split randomly, it gives off neutrons and then those can find other atoms to split. When you get that many uh, fissile atoms, uranium-235, close together, they 
want to tend to start splitting each other. <laughs> so uh, to store the enriched product safely, you'd want a tank that's more like in the in the order of about five inches wide, uh, 12 centimeters or so. When you have a long slender tank, uh, those neutrons tend to do what's called leakage. So they tend to leave the tank and not come back, which is good for preventing a chain reaction. Since these tanks are so big and circular like, they're very good at like keeping neutrons in. So if, a new, if an atom fissions and spits out neutrons, it's much more likely to find other fissile atoms and start a chain reaction. So yeah, in terms of centrifuges, these are too big, uh, but the idea is right. You would have literally hundreds of centrifuges can be hooked up together in a room. Uh, it's called a centrifuge cascade in order to enrich uranium, because like as I was saying earlier, you have to send the output, the product of one centrifuge into another to keep concentrating. You can't concentrate it all in one centrifuge purely just because of how similarly these two atoms weigh uranium-235 and uranium-238. You just have to keep spinning it in separate tanks. You just have to keep, it just keeps bumping the enrichment up as it moves from, uh, sorry, not tanks, centrifuges. Keeps bumping the enrichment up as it moves from centrifuge to centrifuge. Spins and spins and spins. Your target is an impact point less than three meters wide. The two-seat aircraft will paint the target with a laser bullseye. The first pair will breach the reactor by dropping a laser-guided bomb. Whoa, 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 whoa. Reactor? We've been talking about uranium enrichment. Now we're talking about reactors. Okay. Uh, first of all, no. <laughs> I mean, there can be. Did they have bad intel? Did the intel change from an enrichment plant to a reactor? So let's back up a little bit. So far, we've been talking about nuclear bombs that are made with uranium. Gaseous centrifuge enrichment is for uranium because uranium exists naturally. You can mine it. You can dig it out of the ground, but you can also make a nuclear bomb with plutonium and plutonium you make in a reactor. So you can stick natural uranium in a reactor, uh, hit it with neutrons, and uranium-238, the part you don't want, will become plutonium-239, which is uh, what you need for a plutonium nuclear bomb. So now we're getting to the point of, well, which one is it? Is it an enrichment plant or is it a reactor? And then I think in, uh, in later points in the movie, they do call it an enrichment plant why this one reactor slip up uh it's never brought up before it's not brought up later the target is an unsanctioned uranium enrichment plant the first pair will breach the reactor by dropping a laser guided bomb a secret uranium enrichment site on chrome state control uh it's just interesting to point out that two very different modes of both getting to the same goal which is making material for a nuclear bomb but one is enrichment plant which is just uh, just a collection of centrifuges, whereas making plutonium involves making a reactor, which is not something you can easily hide. Not something you would probably build underground. Nothing saying you couldn't, but they're pretty big facilities. It would be very expensive. But yeah, just some uh, some loose history about the premise of this film. This is actually a uh, this is not the first time this has been thought up or happened. This attack by jets on a reactor. Back in 1981, the Israelis launched a strike of fighter jets from their country to Iraq to blow up the Osirak reactor, which Iraq claimed was not going to be used for weapons production, plutonium production. Israel disagreed and they launched the strike and blew up the reactor. And that reactor never went operational. And then about 10 years later, the United States also attacked Iraqi research reactors in uh, Desert Storm. Now, is it possible to have reactors that don't make weapons material? Not really, no. If you have an environment where neutrons can hit other atoms, it's always possible to make weapons material. The question is whether or not these reactors are optimized for it. Some reactors could take a very long time, like very low power research reactors could take a very long time to make enough material for a nuclear bomb. Whereas I don't know, something like the what the United States or the Soviets had during the Cold War, dedicated reactors to producing plutonium. So yeah, the decision whether or not to give these kinds of countries nuclear reactors for electricity generation versus will they try and extract weapons material from these reactors is a discussion and decision that societies need to make and talk about. Now, is contamination of the surrounding areas an issue from these strikes? No, not really. It depends. Uh, for the enrichment plant, no. Uranium really isn't that dangerous by itself. It's really not that radioactive. It really doesn't give off a lot of radiation. You can hold it in your hand as long as you're wearing like a glove. Just don't uh, 
lick it or eat it or anything. <laughs> um, if you bomb, if you're bombing a reactor that has been operating, as in it has been splitting atoms, that could be much more dangerous to the surrounding environment. That could be more similar to a Chernobyl type situation in terms of dispersal of material. Uh, but if the reactor has is fueled and has never been turned on, it would be a similar contamination hazard for the uh, enrichment plant. Um, uranium and even plutonium to a lesser extent in their in what we may call their fresh form are really not that dangerous. But once uh, once a reactor has been turned on, the fuel becomes very, very, very radioactive. Your tail is clear, big one's bugged out. All right, guys, there you go. Top Gun Maverick. Overall, I thought it was a pretty fine movie. It was pretty good. Is it better than the original? No, probably not for me. Who doesn't love Tomcats? Tomcats are great. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.